to this edition of Inside the Courtroom. This is Stephanie Singh in for Gigi. This episode continues to follow the current complaint against Russell Simmons, filed in the Southern District of New York in February of this year, 2024. Simmons has faced a series of allegations from over 20 women spanning nearly a decade. Despite these claims, Simmons has continually denied all wrongdoing. According to court documents and several news outlets, however, Russell Simmons agreed to pay $3 million to three women in binding settlements by October 1st of this year. The settlements include $1 million, $265,000 each for Sylvie Abrams and Sherry Abernathy, and $515,000 for Wendy Carolina Franco. Abrams previously accused Simmons of sexual assault, and over 20 women have alleged sexual misconduct against Simmons. Simmons has yet to comment on the missed payments. These agreements were reached to resolve allegations of personal and physical injuries, though Simmons does not admit wrongdoing. To expedite potential legal action in case of default, Simmons signed confessions of judgment, allowing the women to swiftly secure court judgments and begin collections. Abrams has been vocal about her experiences, alleging Simmons assaulted her in 1994. Her story was featured in the 2020 documentary On the Record, which delved into the challenges black women face in the hip-hop industry. Speaking of the challenges of black women in media, Oprah Winfrey said Russell Simmons attempted to pressure her about her involvement in the 2020 documentary, On the Record. He reached out to me several times in attempt to pressure me, Winfrey said in an AP News report. According to multiple news sources, Oprah Winfrey says Russell Simmons attempted to pressure her about her involvement with the documentary On the Record. He reached out to me several times in an attempt to pressure me, Winfrey says in an AP News report. But it was not anything Simmons said that prompted me to withdraw from the documentary on the record, she goes on to clarify. On the record is a documentary about the accusations alleged against Simmons. Winfrey, who was initially a part of the documentary, states inconsistencies in the story of one of Simmons's accusers. Winfrey said she believed the story, but more investigation had to be done. Winfrey wanted to delay the release of the film, scheduled to premiere January 2020 at the Sundance Film Festival. But that belief was not shared by the film's directors, Kirby Dick and Amy Ziering, who believed they had ample evidence against Simmons and the film was ready for Sundance. Thus, Winfrey affirms, all involved were not aligned in the creative vision of the documentary. So the documentary on the record moved forward without Winfrey. This new lawsuit was filed in the federal courts, the Southern District of New York, February 2024. This plaintiff was also a part of the documentary On the Record. She's petitioning the federal courts, asserting the federal court has the power to decide her case, claiming diversity jurisdiction. Diversity jurisdiction is the federal government's authority and jurisdiction over disputes between citizens of different states or countries. Her motion does not address arguments concerning her 1997 agreement with Simmons. Her initial essay complaint will only be heard here if the federal court determines it has jurisdiction over the dispute. A very good move. Simple, right? Each party must be a U.S. citizen and domiciled in the United States or another country. Simmons was born in the United States and is domiciled in Indonesia, but he's claiming that he's not a foreigner, not a citizen or really subject to Indonesia. Simmons is not claiming residency in Bali. Simmons is in Indonesia on a retirement visa, so he's not a citizen of any state or country, thus a stateless citizen. This complaint challenges Russell Simmons' stateless status, which has, admittedly, been a clever way to evade charges and punitive actions. This complaint hits the bullseye in not only gaining retribution but demanding Simmons stand trial. His residency and stateless status is being challenged. This stateless title has assisted Russell Simmons in skipping out on any of his civil duties or obligations in my opinion, it's like watching a man on the run. Russell Simmons's attorneys replied to Jane Doe on November 11, 2024, again demanding that the courts dismiss Jane Doe's claims. We urge the plaintiff to be reasonable, to be fair with judicial resources, and to realize that when the court lacks jurisdiction, as is the case here, it behooves all parties to accept that truth, however inconvenient, Simmons' lawyer argues. For these reasons and those that follow, Simmons respectfully seeks a judgment on the pleadings to dispose of plaintiff's claims with prejudice. Simmons continues to claim that he has produced documents supporting the fact that he is not domiciled in New York, nor anywhere in the United States. Since Simmons is in Indonesia on a retirement visa, he is not a citizen of that country either. He is a stateless citizen. Interesting, right? In this sense, diversity jurisdiction has not been met, but there are plenty of ways to disprove Simmons' stateless status, residency, and intent. Let's see how the courts rule. As of October 1, 2024, Simmons has failed to make legally binding settlement payments. 
Now his accusers are challenging his stateless status, which has assisted him tremendously in his evasive movements and avoidance of consequences. There have been so many hypothetical theories and predictions surrounding this RICO case with Sean Combs. This new lawsuit against Simmons, coupled with the missing payments now being attempted to be tried in the Southern District of New York, makes me think Simmons may be the next in line. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Do you think this woman will finally stop Russell Simmons in his tracks? Is this just a coincidence that this case is in the Southern District of New York and his close buddy is facing a RICO in the same court? Leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe for more.